Hello and welcome to day seven of our January challenge 2020 and our sixth day of looking in a gentle way at Lauren Scott's The Seal Lullaby. So today we're going to do the answering phrase to what we learned yesterday. So I'm going to play from yesterday through into today and then we'll look at our new bit of learning. So I'm actually going to start just before bar 16 to hear these yesterday's learning and today's and how they fit together. Here we go. One, two. into today's learning. So I actually want to start with the left hand today um, because it looks quite busy and it could be a bit panicky but it's okay um, and I want to help you see why. So we're looking at the beginning of our 20 there. The left hand is on one of these stretched out shapes. So we've got an F in the bass and a finger two on the red but instead of completing the octave with our thumb, we're overreaching to get to the A. We can either reach for it and place it, or we can hop it. If you remember back in day two, we had a similar size shape. So we're going to play F, C, and then before we play the A, we're gonna put finger two back onto the black F and play from the one heading down. Okay, and that works because we have the four and the two. And although we're adding the finger two on, the thumb is already here, so our brain goes, play that first, play the one that was already there first. And we head down to that F, okay? So that's your first bar there. The second bar, similar shape. This time the lowest note is an A and our thumb will be aiming for a red. So finger two has ended up on an E from that A. That's one, two, three, four, five strings higher. We always count the one we start from as number one in our music counting. So we have A, we reach our thumb to the C, and before we play the C, we're gonna add fingers two and three, and we're just gonna allow them to fall down and trust that they're gonna land on the next string. So we play three in a row, C, B, A. Okay, so if we just try that second bar there, this is bar 21. We've got an A and an E heading for thumb on middle C. Add fingers two and three. Okay, and I can't stress enough how much I don't want you to be looking for where two and three are and trying to find them with your fingers in a visual way. How much I want you to just bring your fingers up close to where your thumb is and allow them to be in a row. In fact, the most useful thing might be to look away together and allow it to happen okay the third bar is very similar we move down a note so instead of starting on the a we're going to a g however we're keeping the e so it's a bit of a bigger stretch now between our finger four and our finger two but then we're going to reach up for the b which was one note down from the red and again three in a row get that nicely placed. So G, E, B, A, G. So that's our third bar and then our final bar for today. A nice straightforward octave with the fifth in the middle. So place your thumb and your four in the black, just open it up and then finger two will nine times out of ten land on that fifth just naturally, which is the red in this case. So let's put all of that left hand together, starting at bar 20, F, C, reaching up for the A. We're going to bring our other F in on the way back down. Then we'll move from there, and you can maybe try this move now, up a little bit so that we're now on A, E and C. And then that comes to three in a row. And then we go down one, but keeping the E in the middle. So we have G at the base and B at the top coming up to three in a row and down one again to get to the F. 
It's a nice pattern there. So we'll play through now, F, C to the A. I'll count you in, this is bar 20, just the left hand. One, and two, and three, and. Ready, A, and. G. F. Okay, should we try that again? So, F, C, up to the A. From the beginning of bar 20, okay. One and two and three and A and G F two and three and okay we can play through that a few more times as well if you'd like then we're going to go on to our top hand, onto our melody hand. So we have this C quaver leading in today. We're going to have a finger three on that C so that our thumb can reach up to the A at the beginning of bar 20. Okay, so the count in would be one and two and three, da, dum, like that. Okay, so we have the C to the A, then we've got a bit of time. We just move a note higher, but we're going to put finger two on the B, thumb on the C. We play the B. And we're going to head back down to that B and we want to add a G on. So rather than going da da and then, I mean, I'm already tripping, trying it. And then thinking, oh, I'll add that three later. As we put the two on, open up your third and allow that to go on at the same time. But the third is a little gap away on the G. So we go B, C, B, G. And then we're back to those same three notes again, C, B and G. C. B, G. Okay, so that's going into bar 22 there with the quaver at the beginning. Then we move up to a D, E. It's a little bit of a snap. Notice how the D is a semi-quaver. It's got that extra little line. And then the E is a dotted quaver. So it's a little bit throw away, really. Then we're going to jump down to C, G and A. Now we can either do that with a three at the bottom, or if that feels like an awkward reach, we could do it with a four, because we've got the two and the one right next to each other. And again, notice that my fingers are nice and low, my thumb's nice and high, my elbow is out, I'm not sort of gripping onto the side of the harp too much there. Okay, so let's just try that, that D, E, and the leap to that C, G, E. So D and E are two clear strings in between a red and a black. And then we're jumping to another two clear strings just above our black F and we're adding a red below it. Okay, so let's practice that in time now. So we're going to go from that D E and then our slightly scrunchy chord. Okay, so here's our counting. You're going to come in on the third beat. One and two and and. Should we try that again? Just that move. It's quite a tricky move to get comfortable with. Same place, D, E, one, and two, and, and. Well done. One last time. Same thing, D, E, in the right hand. One, and two, and. Okay. And then one more note to add on that. It's an octave F. Well, handily Fs are black strings or sometimes blue strings, but they're a nice strong colour string. And what I'd like for you to do is to be able to pay attention to where the fourth finger goes because that's still in a relatively easy visual point and open up the octave and allow your peripheral vision to clock that your thumb is on the right string. So ideally we're not pulling away to look at our harp. We want ideally to maintain our lovely shape with our relaxed shoulders and our head in a nice alignment where we're looking at the music pretty much directly in front of us and the strings just there very small head movements so not having to suddenly pull our whole shoulder away which means we end up gripping with our knees and getting really tight but allowing our hand to be able to play that cga chord and then we just gently move our head towards it and we focus on that finger four on the f there 
okay that's what we're aiming for so let's put all of that right hand together going back to the C A at the beginning of this section so third finger on the C thumb on the A and we'll take it nice and gently and we'll count our way through it so here we go the C is right at the end of the previous bar here's our count nice relaxed shoulders one and two and three and two and 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 two and 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 well done should we try that one more time same thing so c to the a third finger to the a with your thumb one and two and three and two and 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 two and 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 good job okay just remind ourselves of our left hand again the first one's got an F right down in the base, finger two is on the red. Our thumb may already be placed on the A if you can reach it or you can hop to it. Okay, let's try this, bar 20, one and two and three and F. together if you want to play just one hand or the other with this go that's okay um, but we're going to go with the lead into bar 20 so we've got this C quaver on its own before they join together here we go one and two and three To any sort of panic state with it into the feeling of oh, I'm going to run out where am I going to go where am I going next where am I going next nice and calm so remembering how that left hand one two three one two three nice patterns nice shapes let's give it another go C to the A in the right hand left hand F C reaching up for the A nice and steady one and two and three. Well done. And then just at the end there, because it's a bit of a leap up to that F, it can be really tempting to snatch it and really put a bit of force behind it but actually we've got a little diminuendo there so we want to get a little bit quieter so it really wants to be like a distant bell tolling or something like that something gentle and high and twinkly perhaps but not it's not a melody note so it's not wanting to be forceful um within our tune should we do one last playthrough? Yeah, go on, we can do it. C to the A. Left hand down on F and C, reaching for the A. After our counting again. One and two and three. just going to do a final play where I'm going to play yesterday into today. I'm going to keep it at that speed so that you might have something to practice along to as well. Whether you play that now 
or after you've done some work on this is up to you. So you might mark this as a place to come back to, to come back um, after you've done the work and come back and play along to. So I'm now going from the upbeat into 16, just to put these two days worth together. Here we go. One and two and. 